Okay. Um, so today we will talk a little bit about how we can securely use CSI Linux uh, for uh, investigations, dark web investigations, or similar things like that, where we want to protect our identity at all costs, right? Uh, for the sake of making this faster, I have already prepared everything that we need. Um, let me talk a little bit about the components that we're going to use here. So first of all, this is a host based on Ubuntu. Then here on this host, we have installed a uh, virtual box. And in this virtual box, we have already downloaded and, uh, and imported the OVA for CSI Linux and also the OVA for Unix. The OVA for Unix comes with two virtual machines, which is the Unix Gateway and the Unix Workstation. The Unix Workstation is something we can handle in a separate video, but for this particular one, it will not be required. So we'll keep this off. Um, to have a little look what those all are, let's see first. Unix, uh, software that can anonymize everything that you do online. So it's obviously a good idea, especially when you're doing investigations into the dark web, stuff like that. Um, link I will put into the description of the video. Then here, basically Unix is nothing else than a, a, a gateway will, will, which will route everything that we do through the Tor network, right? So Tor, we already had discussed in the previous video, the Onion router, so I think I don't need to go into that too deep at this point. Then here we have VirtualBox, which is, of course, the open, not open source, well, uh, which is the free uh, free uh, virtualization software. You could also use VMware, uh, theoretically. There's always some pros and cons using a paid software, obviously, right? Uh, so I, I, I for, the sake, for the sake of this, I use VirtualBox. I do use VMware Workstation Pro for, for other, for other stuff on my Windows host, but for this particular one on my Linux host, I use VirtualBox. Um, we have also here CSI Linux, which is basically a ready-made VM with all the tools that you would need um, to, to do basic investigations, forensic stuff and, and whatnot, right? So uh, I will go through this in a, in a while a little bit as well. And to start with maybe so that we are all talking about the same thing, OSINT, what is OSINT? Open source intelligence, of course. So meaning intelligence that is gathered from published or otherwise publicly available sources, this, it's free, it's open source, it's uh, it, it's available to everybody, it's legal, and it's not anything that you need to think of as a malicious thing or a bad thing if you use it the right way. Again, disclaimer, whatever you could do with all those investigation techniques can be used for bad reasons don't do that obviously right so we are all ethical here so let's keep it that way okay um having said this maybe let's start uh first thing is we will start the unix gateway um and then keep this open here on the left side and we will start once this is up. We'll start up the this Linux. Can ignore this one. Um, give it a few seconds, doesn't take too long to start. And I think we're good now. There we go, we're open, we're running. Can verify this by checking. Yeah, it's okay. And then we also will do a quick system check. This is a command that will just check for the basic functionality. First of all, if it's routing through door, yes, it does. Connection is enabled. Is there an update? It will also tell if there's any updates. So it will give you a warning here if there's any updates package that have updates available, right? Make sure you always keep it up to date for the obvious reasons, right? So this is good. Now we power up CSI Linux on the other side. And maybe while this boots up, what I wanna show you is a little bit how this is configured. So we go here to the settings and here in the network 
step of the settings, we have the adapter number one, which is here in this case default NAT, configured via NAT, uh, or to use NAT. And adapter number two is configured for Unix uh, network. So these are the two that we have here. That's all we need to see at this point while this is still putting up. Ignoring these two, we put this also on the second side and let it put while we are waiting for this to put up. Well, actually, it's already almost done. There we go. So we have our default credentials here. And there we go. So now, uh, once this is up, we will see a few features here, right? So first of all, this is how the look and feel of CSI Linux is. There's a lot of features here for aiding your investigations, right? And uh, especially here, it's all in different sections of the tool. So encryption, secure communications, tools and case management. Uh, for this, we also have the uh, obviously ones that we are talking about today. Um, for purposes of checking the functionality of the of the gateway and the other tools that I'm going to show you today. So I always prefer to use ipinfo.io to verify my IP. So you see that's my current IP. Don't sweat it. I'll get the new one after this. So this now would be completely straight out to the internet where my IP address obviously would be visible or uh, recorded wherever I browse. OK, let's close this down. And now we come to the topic of the session. So there's there's actually two ways here in, in CSI to do this. There's the CSI Tor VPN, which I also will show a little later in comparison. And that is just as fine and just as good. Uh, but the purpose of the video today is the CSI connect, also the, the secure connection via the Unix gateway, which is this particular tool, right? So if, if we look at um, the current configuration here, Okay, so uh, what I want to show you here is the current configuration. So we go here and type a IP address. So we have uh, the local host interface, obviously. Then we have the EMP, the S3, which is the, uh, the interface that will have actually the direct connectivity via NAT. And then we have the S8, which is the one that is the interface that is routing through the gateway here on this side. OK, so for the purpose of showing this now, we go here and click CSI Gateway. So we have to type our password here. And then we will say CSI Gateway on. And watch the background uh, of the desktop as well. You see, so once the connection, as we have seen here, now the our externally facing IP has changed to be this. You can see it's in Germany. And also our desktop has changed. This is the visual uh, confirmation that we are currently routing everything through the uh, through the Unix gateway. Um, we can now go back here to our tool that I've mentioned earlier, the ipinfo.io. Uh, have a look at this, confirm it here as well. Yes. So right now, everything is routed through to our network. And this, in this case, we are in a hop in Berlin, in Germany. Now, what we could do here is um, we could. First of all, we type Hudix again, sorry, to get the info of all the features that we can use here. And then there's one that will tell you restart Tor, right? So do service Tor at default restart. So we do this real quick. Paste. Enter. This is done. We wait a couple of seconds here on this side and we'll see when we refresh this, there we go. Now we are in Switzerland, going through Switzerland. We're still going through this one. You can always monitor what's going on here by using the command nix. And this will tell you uh, different information. It will show the current con communication. Like, for example, if I'm using here a website, you will actually see that there's now some traffic being routed and yeah pretty much that's that's it that's uh how we know that we are going through 
the door gateway, uh, sorry, through the Unix gateway, right? Oh, so the other way of doing this, which I also want to mention because it's just as legitimate, we just turn off this one here again, and you will see here, turn it off, gateway off, and in a second you will see here the background has changed. So now we know it's again going directly through my official IP address that I have from my provider, which is obviously also visible here. <clears throat> yeah, so same, we see it here, all the same. And then we go for the second tool, which we have here, with the door VPN. We again need our password, and then we'll need to choose the correct adapter, which is in our case the NAT adapter now, the first one. We say OK. We say door VPN on. And again, we'll see the background change. Once the connection is established successfully. <clears throat> And it's there go. Uh, fine. And now we are going through Montreal, Canada. So basically that's more or less uh, more or less what we see here, right? And again Give it a few seconds. Yeah. And if we change this here, we would see the same again, right? So basically, that's the door VPN. And we will now disconnect from this as well. Uh, this is the correct interface. We'll see door VPN off. We'll see again the background will change once we are connected directly to the internet and we see here again our official IP, which also will reflect again here. When we go here. Yep, there we go. So having said all this, right, so why why you wonder, you might wonder why, why would we want to do this, right? So there's multiple reasons. First of all, if your investigation leads you into the dark web, deep web, Obviously, there's some dangers with this, right? So no matter how good the Tor browser is, the Tor browser running on a on a physical machine or whatever, it's 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 not a bad it's not a bad tool to keep your identity fairly anonymous. But of course, browsers have vulnerability. The Tor browser is also just based on on the same technology as most other browsers, right? So therefore, there could always be vulnerabilities that make the Tor browser susceptible. Uh, 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 vulnerable to attacks that might mean that when you browse your actually IP or actually clear net or your actually clear net IP is um, leaked out of the browser. Of course, uh, have running this in a virtual machine setup is also not 100% secure. There have, there have been cases where where there, where there was a, a, a where there were vulnerabilities. I think not too long ago for for virtual box there was one patch right where a malware could actually escape the virtual machine and therefore access the host and therefore actually still again had access to the real IP address or things like that. So you always have to be extra careful, but nevertheless, uh, this is definitely a very good way of doing your uh, OSINT investigations, right? And again, just maybe quickly, though I will do a separate video entirely on CSI Linux and then I will also do a separate video on uh, how you build your own OSINT machine from scratch, which is basically what I did on my Ubuntu host. On here you see you have all those live draft max, crisis watch, uh, materialization, whatever you need here. You have it all in here already pre-installed. Uh, same with the malware analysis tools, incident response tools. Um, if you want to create uh, a new case, we have here the option to do this. We are very intuitive way. You can say start a case. Um, welcome to the case management system. Open existing case or start a new case. We can start a new one. It, it comes with pre-configured templates for all types of investigations. So it's pretty good and uh, uh, very helpful if you're managing several investigations at the same time. For me personally, what I do is basically I run a new CSI Linux VM for each 
for each purpose, for each investigation, if you will. I have a, if I have a go, like, let's, say, let's call it a golden copy, right? And which are just cloned for every new investigation so that I'm sure that nothing other than this particular investigation was done with this VM. It's completely uh, un, un how, how do you say this? Uh, sorry, in English, uh, it's it's not it's not been tainted with anything else outside of this investigation. So you can later, when you're done with your investigation, shut down that particular VM, uh, make an archive of it, make a copy of it, uh, save it somewhere, keep it somewhere. If ever somebody will question your investigation, you can just provide the entire VM as it was, and it can be used by court officials or whatever to actually. Uh, check if your investigation was carried out properly or if there was any malware on that system that you did your investigation from, stuff like that. That can happen. Um, the CSI Linux is very, very good. I really like it. However, there's also, of course, uh, some merit to having your own custom built uh, VM. First of all, you know what's on there. Uh, if you just import this, yes, it comes with all the tools, but uh, if you build your own, at least you have built every every one of your tools yourself. So this is kind of beneficial in terms of the learning process and how you run it, right? So if you look now, let's just minimize those. Uh, so here, this is my actual uh, host in this case, but I also do have a, a, a setup where I run uh, uh, Ubuntu VM that I built from scratch uh, with all these tools. There's a great book about that. I'll put the link in the description as well on how you do this. And it comes with more or less all the same tools that we have seen in, in CSI Linux. But the difference is you, you know how to build all those from scratch and you can really custom tailor it for you. Uh, that's pretty much it. So with this, I think uh, we know now a little bit on the two different options that you can use for running your CSI Linux through the Tor network entirely, the, them being the Tor VPN that I've showed you earlier, and the second one being the Unix gateway, which I showed you here. Uh, just for final, uh, so there, there's always the discussion between Tails OS for security and, and, and whatnot, right? Tails is great. Tails is great if you boot it from a USB stick, right? But uh, once you run it in a virtualized environment, it's not really doing its purpose anymore. And if you boot it from a USB stick, while you can configure persistence, right? Uh, it's configuring persistence without 100% knowing what you're doing can actually do more harm than good, right? So therefore, Tails is really good if you just want one-time access to something special and you want to make sure that uh, you leave no traces behind on your physical machine as well or anything, then that's fine. For everything else, I recommend doing something like either Unix workstation via gateway or some things like that, right? So here we have now the Unix workstation, which is where you would actually do all your all your um, investigations. And by default, this will already go through the Unix gateway here. So we'll see the same here if you say IP info right now. We would see that we are going through Berlin again, and then we could probably go back here again to the uh, gateway. And we could again say, Default restart, and then we would see again here after a few seconds this will change. As you can see, all right now, right? So, this is the second way of doing uh, secure browsing, or if you just want to browse for something or just want to research something real quick, that is another way of doing it. But for me, I prefer to either use my CSI Linux for proper investigations or my custom built Ubuntu with all the common scripts. Ubuntu, because it's just simply my preference, but of course this would work on, on any other Linux uh, environment, just the same. Uh, I'll put all the links to, to the different downloads in the description of the video for you to have a look at it. Plus, I will put a few links also on uh, tutorials that might be either mine or not mine, but uh, at least for you to have a little help on how to set this all up from scratch. And with this, I'll, I'm gonna end my video today and I hope this has 
learned some you have learned something new today or at least given you an idea on further research into these things like CSI Linux or Hunix gateways and uh, OSINT. So with this, have a great day and uh, next video, see you soon.